everyone, my name is Chloe and today I'm here with the second part of my July wrap up. So if you have not seen part one, I will link it down below, but um, let's just get into it. So it was unexpectedly a really great second half of the month for reading. Um, it started off like the middle to the 20 something was like awesome and then it's kind of fizzled but so has like my mental health um because i have said before but we are in the middle of a high-risk pregnancy and so my mind is kind of elsewhere but i still have done a lot of reading so in the second half of july i read 18 books um and the average page length is 240 pages I have my daughter standing right here. My um, four-year-old is being my cue card girl. She's got my stat sheet, and we're trying to film this while her baby sister or her little sister naps. So um, if you see me looking to the side, that's what I'm doing. But I read 4,319 pages, which is 270 pages per day. Um, and you'll see why I think in a little bit. I read some nonfiction, and that is really helpful to me in times of stress. So um, I read 13 novels, four chapter books, and one graphic novel. I read 13 adult books and five middle grade. And then as far as the ranking go, or the star rating goes, I read three three stars, five three and a half stars, eight four stars, which is awesome. Um, one four and a half and one five. And so the average is 3.78. I say in all these videos that if it's above three and a half, that means I had a pretty darn good month. So um, I read 10 off my shelf and 18 from, or an eight from somewhere else. So that's good. I read more off my shelf than not. So that's always my goal. Um, I read six from Libby, five from my shelf, three from Hoopla, two from the library, and two from NetGalley. So then also I read 11 on audiobook and seven physically. I did not read any ebooks this month. Um, just because I don't know I've really been like the past few months I've really been loving physically reading but audio is like truthfully how I get most stuff done so I've been doing those um I read five new release and 13 backlist and then as far as genre goes this is really interesting to me I read four nonfiction, three romance three mystery thrillers three magical realism two contemporary one christian fiction one science fantasy, and one women's fiction. So really all over the board. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different genres that I read in this second half of the month. So that's pretty awesome. So let's just get into the books. Um, I, I am going to just insert pictures of all of them because it's a little quicker than like finding all the books, especially the middle grade ones. So um, the first one I read was Monsters and Mold by Asia, Asia Citro. And that is one of the ones in um, the... Zoe and Sassafras series. Do you love Zoe and Sassafras? Yes. You can't see her, but she's nodding very enthusiastically because she loves it. And this one, the series is about a little girl who is a scientist and she has magical creatures that come to her family's barn door. And this one, a monster comes and he keeps growing mold and he wants to go to this dance and he can't get rid of the mold. And so he needs um, Zoe and Sassafras to help him figure out why he's getting moldy and how to make it stop. And it was so cute. I gave it um, five stars. That was my five star. And then we've got One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. So I loved In Five Years by Rebecca Searle and my expectations were really high. And the basic premise of this book is that this girl, her and her mom had planned on going to Italy for this vacation and then her, like knowing her mom was sick and then her mom dies and so she decides to go anyway by herself. And when she gets there, she sees her mother, but her mother is like 30 years old. And I've heard really mixed reviews on this and mostly negative. And I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. Um, I can see why people don't though. There's definitely an, a, a cheating element that makes it really hard to root for our main character. Um, I also wish there was a little more explanation of like the time travel -y element, but I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. Not as much as in five years, but I enjoyed it. Next is For the Children's Sake, and that's by Susan Schaefer McCall. Um, I gave that four stars. That is one that has been recommended to me as one to read as we begin our homeschooling journey, and it was very inspiring for homeschool and just for um, schooling your children in a, in a different way. I mean, um, I taught public school, and so getting out of that public school mindset is something that I'm really working on, and this was really inspiring to me. Um, next is Every Summer After by uh, Carly Fortune. So I had high hopes for this book because this is my favorite trope of all time. It's first love, second chance, and I gave it four stars. So um, I had to take like emotional breaks during this book because it was so emotional and so relatable. Um, it was hard. It was heavy. 
but I didn't love it. Um, I gave it, I, I gave it four because it was a little too steamy and, um, I wanted more detail about like why the relationship ended in the first place. And like, because obviously something happened. It's first love, second chance. So they, long story short, um, she, her and her family went to the summer house, I think. And there were these two boys that live next door, brothers and one of them. And she had a relationship every, all the time. Um, that grew into more, obviously. And then something happened. They broke up. And now it's many years later. And the brother calls and is like, hey, our mom died. Can you come back? So she does. And she's confronted with her first love. And I want to know more about why they broke up. And then the ending was, like, pretty abrupt and um, felt a little unsatisfactory to me. But I gave it four stars. I still really liked it and was really, like, emotionally impacted by it. Next is Dinosaurs Before Dark. So that is the first in the Magic Treehouse series. We love the Magic Treehouse series. Huh? We bought a box set of the first 28. This is by Mary Pope Osborne, and this is a classic series. And in this one, a brother and sister named Jack and Annie find this treehouse, and it's full of books. And one of them is looking, Jack, I think, is looking through a dinosaur book, and he says, like, I wish I could see that in real life. And then the treehouse starts spinning, and they go to the time of dinosaurs. And they have to figure out, like, is is this a good thing? Is it not? Are we safe? And how do we get home? So I really liked that. I'm surprised I didn't give that five stars, um, but I gave it four. Now looking back, maybe it's more of a five star. Um, next is These Things Hidden by Heather Gunkoff, and I gave this four and a half stars. So I don't want to say a whole lot about this. Heather, Goon Heather Gunkoff is one of my favorite authors. Um, I really love her books, and this is no different. This is a story about four different women, one of which owns a library uh, or a bookstore, one of which is just getting out of jail after serving some time. Um, we don't really know why. Then we also get um, d uh, her sister and then one other person's perspective. So I don't really want to say a whole lot about like how their stories entwine or really even what's going on, except that these are good like domestic dramas, I would say. And this is a good book about sisterhood, motherhood, and it was just, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Next is um, The Secret Wife by Emily Emily Shiner. So this one is one I gave four stars. I wish it would have had a different title because I feel like the title is a little bit spoilery. It is a thriller about this couple. Um, he had a daughter coming into the relationship and then they had a daughter together. So they have two daughters and he takes them camping uh, to give the mom a break just to they get them like somewhere else so she can just kind of relax for a minute because she is the default parent and she wears so many hats and so she, he wants to give her a break. So they go, and the girls go missing. Only one of them comes back. The other is still missing. It's his daughter, like, from his previous marriage that is still missing. So it's a thriller trying to figure out what happened. The uh, Their daughter together has gone kind of selectively mute, and what she is saying is, is kind of sketchy, and so we don't know what's going on. Um, I really enjoyed it. But I, again, I felt like the twist was a little, um, given the title, the twist wasn't that great. Next is, um, Good Luck by Whitney Gaskell. So I read this one, um, and I liked it. It was a cute women's fiction. I gave it, let's see, I gave it four stars. Um, Whitney Gaskell is another pretty reliable women's fiction author for me. This is about this woman who her world falls apart on one day. She loses her job. She loses her boyfriend. She loses all her things. And then um, the next day she wins the lottery and she wins like $84 million. So she has to figure out kind of what to do. She's like got this scandal because she was a teacher and she was accused of some stuff with a student. And so she's got this scandal around her name in this small town so she tries to escape and yet people are after her for her money and it was cute it was entertaining I gave it four stars my cue card girl slowly keeps backing up um then I read Dear Sister by Allison McGee um and this one it was so cute I gave it four stars one somebody was telling me about this and if it was you I I'm sorry that I can't remember I think it was one in Krista's um Patreon group somebody was talking about it and I thought it was just so cute because it's a it's a short book about this brother a little boy who I think he's eight when his little sister is born and he starts writing her letters because his parents are like making him write her a letter or draw her a picture for her, their, her baby book 
and he is not a fan of his little sister for a lot of the life and it follows him until he's off in college and their relationship changes and it's so sweet I just really wanted more from it because it covers like over 10 years in a really quick I think I read the whole thing in 15 minutes so I wanted a little more but it was really sweet then I read The Life Giving Home by Sally and Sarah Clarkson. Um, this was another one that was recommended to me as we start this homeschooling journey. And I did not like this one nearly as well. I gave it three stars. But now that I'm thinking about it, it may be more like two, two and a half. And it's all about um, having a welcoming home and having, um, and it, like it doesn't really have to do that much with homeschooling. Like the girl happens to homeschool, but it's more about like having an open home, um, making sure others feel welcome. And the way she did it, like the way the examples and the the way she talked about like having a welcoming home and stuff felt very judgy and very like her way or the highway and very um, privileged and very like aesthetic based. And I don't know. I just, I didn't really get the point of this book. I didn't love it. Next, I read Karen's Kitty Cat Club. This is a part of the Babysitter's Club Little Sisters books. Um, if you guys haven't been watching for a while, my daughter and I, she is four and a half and we've been reading the um well, we've been reading quite a few different chapter books, but she also really likes the Little Sister series. And it follows Karen, who is Christy's little sister. Christy is the one who started the Babysitter's Club. So I never read these as a kid, and I'm really liking them. This one was not my favorite. It's three and a half stars. Karen kind of wants to be like Christy, so she starts a kitty cat club for cat sitting. And it doesn't really work out. So, um... There was that. Then I read The Baxters by Karen Kingsbury. So this is the prequel um, to her long-running Baxter series. I have not read a single one of those. And so I know nothing of the family. And this one I gave three and a half stars as well because I was entertained. So the whole premise is one of the Baxter children is getting married. And nobody is quite sure, including the person getting married, if this is the right marriage for her. She was in a, a relationship with somebody else. Like she had this first love that was really great. And their relationship kind of ended on a miscommunication. And so now she's marrying this other guy who is maybe not like as great for her and so like the weather like is very stormy as well as like figuratively things are very stormy we get introduced to a lot of the Baxter family and we get a little chunk of their story and so it definitely like had me intrigued for reading the rest of the series but was it necessary and did it stand on its own I don't know so three and a half stars it was entertaining and it definitely had me intrigued um, but it wasn't the best thing I ever read on its own Next is Out of the Spin Cycle by Jen Hatmaker. So this is a series of, I think, 40 devotionals for moms. And um, I gave it three and a half stars. So some of them were so good. And I think this is the way it always is with devotionals. Some of them really hit home with you and some of them don't. And if I were to read this again in a year or two years or 10 years, um, different ones may hit differently for me. Um, and so I, I liked it. It was all like a lot of her points were a stretch from what she was like anecdotally talking about and then how she connected it to scripture. They were, they were a little bit of a stretch, but like I said, some of them really, I think like four out of the 40 really hit home for me and the others were just okay. So three and a half stars, definitely something I will return to at some point. Um, then I read Breathless by Amy McCullough. So this is a relatively new book. Um, it came out this year about this woman who is trying to summit this big mountain. She has tried different mountains and failed before, but this one she's extra motivated because there's this um, Char Charles McVeigh, Charles McVeigh maybe, this world-renowned hiker, um, mountaineer, who is trying to summit this mountain as a series of a whole bunch of different mountains. And if he, if, if they both complete it, then he will grant her an interview that he has not given to anybody else. And so um, she's trying to do that. But then as they start the summit and as they start like climbing, people start dying. Now, I gave this book three stars. I didn't love the first three quarters like the first three quarters was probably a two star and then the last quarter was probably a four star um because there's really no tension like first of all there's a lot of detail about climbing and mountain climbing and that kind of stuff which is fine you could tell the author really knew what she was talking about but like it just got kind of boring but really the problem was there's just no tension because people are like well yeah people die all the time on mountains like stuff happens it could be animals it could be oxygen it could be whatever and I liked the idea of like the altitude sickness and um just like the conditions causing people to go a little crazy so you don't exactly know who you can trust I really liked that idea um but like none of the tension or action happened until the very end so three stars 
Um, then I read The Nights at Dawn by Mary Pope Osborne, and I gave this one three and a half stars. This is number two in the Magic Treehouse series. Um, again, the kids go back. The little sister, Annie, she is like no fear, and she's just like wants to check it all out, which is kind of like my Annie. Um, and I really love how spunky she is. So she's like, let's go back to the treehouse and figure out what's going on. So they go, and um, she decides to go to like mid medieval ages. And her big brother, Jack, is like, all right, let's go. And so they go. Um, this one I felt like all of these books are like 60 or 70 pages. They're really short. And this one I felt like needed a little more development or description or something um, because it didn't have the same level of tension that the dinosaurs did. And so I gave it three and a half stars. Still good. Not the best. And then last I read um, Your High Risk Pregnancy, A Practical and Supportive Guide um, by Diana Rab, Rab. And I gave it three stars. Um this, I feel like, kind of didn't fit the title. Like, this is a really good guide to pregnancy in general and what to expect, like, if this is your first pregnancy and the tests that you'll do, the appointments that you'll have, kind of what getting pregnant means scientifically, um, and all stuff that, like, I feel like I didn't need to know and I didn't really apply to us um, because, I mean, this is our third kid. We've gone through fertility stuff. We know more than enough about, like, all that kind of stuff. What I wanted is more, like, um, the tests and the things that you will go through and feel as a high-risk patient. And I didn't feel like, like, I felt like this is more general pregnancy. It did go into some high-risk situations and not specific conditions, which I did really appreciate. Um, but it went into some, like, extra tests that you may have. But I definitely felt like it was very factual and not, like, a supportive guide. Um so it was just okay. Three stars. Wouldn't recommend it necessarily if you're going through a high-risk pregnancy looking for like something supportive. So can you hear both of my kids yelling in the background? This is what happens when you film at four o'clock on a Thursday. We had a crazy weekend and I almost always film on the weekend um, just because that's when my husband's home and I have an extra set of hands and we, I was not able to this weekend. And so I'm filming at four o'clock on a Thursday um, my kids are singing on two separate floors of the house. My youngest is now awake upstairs and my oldest is no longer holding my cue card and she is downstairs and they're singing and yelling to each other. So if you guys can hear that, those are my kids. Um, but that's it. Let me know if you've read any of these books. I'm sorry for the chaos. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.